hello. We are back. So, uh, yes, so now for the rest of the day, we have two lessons. One on data formats, which we're not actually going to much detail. We give this really high level summary that addresses some of the questions which people have been asking yesterday and today. And then we go on to productivity tools. But we did teach this course or this lesson in full last year, and you can find it from the playlist of the course last year, link from the main page. So Simo, where do we start with? Yeah, uh, so ma oh, maybe I'll way, introduce Simo, myself. So yeah, my, my name is Simo Tuomisto. I'm from uh, Auto Scientific Computing, and I've been working with Python for, well, 15 years at this point or something, so a long time. Uh, so. In the in the chat in the HackMD, there were lots of good questions about like NumPy and and pandas and what what it means like what are the columns in pandas and there were questions about tidy format also, which is like uh, popular in Argus tidyverse and and we'll quickly explain these concepts. But like Richard said, we had a lo longer dive on this last year, so if you want to see like that, you should check the video. But let's te teach the main concepts. So when when we're talking about data frames, like data frames are like like I I figure out this analog of like a hardware store. So if you go to a hardware store, you have like hammers in one aisle, you have nails in one aisle, you have nuts and bolts in one aisle and wrenches in one aisle. So you have different aisles of uh, different things and lawn mowers in in like you can have completely different things in one aisle and and another aisle can have a completely different thing. This is basically what a data frame is. So data frame is organized in columns. So each column has one type of a thing. So so it has integers or it has uh, timestamps or it has strings. So in the code example there, you don't have to write it. Uh, we have an example data frame that has like strings and timestamps and integers and, and floating point numbers. And all of these can be like in some sort of a correspondence, of course. So you can have like temperature and pressure or something. Or you can, like if we go to the hardware store analogy, if you go down one aisle and you find a certain kind of a nut and you know that, okay, I need a corresponding wrench to tighten this nut, then you go to the wrench aisle and you go to that place. In, in, in Pandas, you usually have the corresponding things in the same place. So in the same row, you would have like... A, the nuts that correspond to a certain wrench and, and then you would you can easily find the things you're looking for. And this is basically what a data frame is. So you have multiple of these columns that are collected together and they are collected into this um, tidy data format. So below in the Richard's share, we have this uh, view of this tidy data format. So you have each column is a variable. So temperature, pressure, time, I don't know, like it can be whatever. <laughs> and, and in each row, you have an observation. So at a certain time, the pressure and temperature was this. And, and the idea behind this is that if you keep this format, it's easy to write tools that you did, like work with this format. So, so you can easily calculate like a average. You, you don't usually have to want to calculate average of time, pressure, and temperature. Like, I mean, like you don't want to calculate because that doesn't make any sense, but you want to calculate an average of, let's say, one column. One You want to calculate temperature over time or something. You want to calculate an average of that. So you some operations are like written for columns, and some operations are written for rows. And because everybody keeps the same format, it's very easy to like and like <laughs> manage these tools. And this is why Pandas and the similar kinds of things like Tidyverse in, in Tidy, uh, in R are like popular. And this is like important, like even though you might have a table where you have like, you just have a table and what does it matter? Uh, is it like organized in what way? It's organized in certain way because like people expect it to be in that way because all of the tools have been written that way. So you should just do it like the other people do. <laughs> and, and this is basically how data yeah. frames are okay. organized. And NumPy arrays are a bit different. So, so all of the columns are usually NumPy arrays. And NumPy arrays can be like multi-dimensional. They're always one data type. So you might have one dimensional array, like a column, 
or you might have like a two dimensional array like a like a matrix or just an array of numbers or multiple like things but usually you have like like let's say a temperature in x and y directions or something like that or you might have a three dimensional array of like like pressure at a different altitudes and different places in in the in the in the world so so in numpy you have this one big blob of same kind of data so organized in in this one one uh blob and what what does this mean is that and yeah so richard and like you would do the same kind of operations across every row column and rank i guess yes so what you would usually do is like you would do let's say you calculate you you take an um, matrix or take an array and then you multiply it by some constant and then you do it apply for it for all of them or you calculate the sum of certain rows or, or certain columns or something like that but but the, okay so you have these two different yeah. formats and they are like mm -hmm. they are different they're fundamentally different but they they have some in some case like in some sense they are the same like but but they are like different uh, it's very yeah. hard to explain, maybe. But yeah, I mean, but the I main thing, like yeah, but the main thing is is that for all of these different things, you see. Sorry. Well, go go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but but for both of these things, they are like tools that are designed around these formats. So, for example, like you don't do mat matrix multiplications in pandas, <laughs> like like you do matrix mm -hmm. multiplications for numpy arrays because, like, for tables of it doesn't make any sense to do matrix multiplication, but for array it makes sense. And and there are tools yeah. for these, and then there are like ways of storing this data that are designed for these things. And for pandas, there are many many tools that are designed, uh, many formats like file formats, like uh, that are designed for certain uh, certain uh, kind of a yeah. data, and for NumPy as well. And usually the situation goes like this, mm -hmm. like. You might have seen this XKCD uh, comic uh, that they are like competing standards, and then somebody's like, "Okay, let's let's write a new standard yeah. that fixes like, okay, all of the problems." Perfect. Let's do something that does yeah. what both of these does. But yeah, and, and then you have one more. So, and this is how it always yeah. goes. So you have like huge amount of competing standards. So there were people asking about R. Uh, if you want to call, like move data from R to Python, either you can like use CSV, for example, or you can use Parquet or Feather. There's there's mentions in the in the article about these different formats. If you want to use MATLAB, you can use MAT files, which are like uh, these HDF5 mm -hmm. files. If you want to use Python and let's say Fortran code, you might need to use HDF5 or or use the Fortran file reader in SciPy. Or, like there's million file formats, and and <laughs> yeah, it's we don't want to give a too long of a talk about it. So let's just say that they are. And if you want to see more about these formats, there's a huge list here. Yeah. And and more will be added here as well. And choose <laughs> yeah. the formats that your tools use, basically. Choose the mm -hmm. file formats that your tools use and your data is uh, optimized for. Yeah. And I guess you could say, I mean, talk to people. Like, I guess our main message here isn't use this or don't use that, but actually do take a little bit, bit of time to think about it before you go too deep into your work. Yeah, yeah, basically. And and, and you know, I would do say some that searching, do some thinking. That Pandas yeah. and NumPy, they already have good interfaces for all of these different data formats. So so check the documentation. Like in this page, there's mentions about it, but but check the documentation on Pandas and NumPy. Don't write your own data reader uh, because mm -hmm. somebody all has written it already. <laughs> like somebody has written yeah. a CSV reader. You don't need to open a CSV file in Python yourself. Like you can just use NumPy or Pandas to read it based on like what sort of data do you have in the CSV file. Uh, there's also yeah. uh, like a yeah, question in chat why why Excel isn't good human readable. Well, Excel is a binary format. Have you opened it with an editor? It's, yeah. uh, but it's it's a good point. Like like many of these formats yeah. are complicated. And uh, and what human readable yeah. means is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a complicated thing. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. 
so maybe we can keep answering these questions yeah. by the text and we can go on. And if you want more, watch the video from last year. Maybe mm -hmm. someone could link it here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but so... let's, we ask, ask questions in the chat. We'll try to answer as many of them. There's some really good questions there and uh, we'll yeah. happily answer them. So what's next? It's 